The metaverse is one of the most exciting technological developments in recent years. What exactly is the metaverse and what does it mean to your business? That's what I want to talk about here today. My name is Eric Kimberling. I'm the CEO of Third Stage Consulting. We're an independent consulting firm that helps clients throughout the world reach the third stages of their digital transformation journeys. And the metaverse is one of the most exciting areas to look at in today's technological landscape. Over the years, we've had a lot of exciting technologies develop, but none have been as exciting as the metaverse, in my opinion. There's a lot of things we don't fully understand about the metaverse. It's still a very young, nascent sort of technology with a lot of upside potential, but also a lot of uncertainty as well. So what I wanna to do today is talk about what exactly the metaverse is, and whether or not it's feasible as a technology you may wanna to consider today. First, it helps to understand what the metaverse is. You may have noticed that recently Facebook rebranded their company to be called Meta because Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook are doubling down on this whole concept of the metaverse. And Facebook is just one example of a company that's developing a metaverse and a whole ecosystem within that metaverse. Facebook is also invested in its Oculus headset. And so those are the eyeglasses that you can use to see augmented reality, virtual reality, and mixed reality. And one of the best ways to start to understand what the metaverse is, is to think of Oculus. When you think of the Oculus headset, you're seeing an alternate world that you can engage with and interact with. Another way to think about the metaverse is actually in some games that have been around for some time now. If you're familiar with games going back as far as SimCity, that was a video game from 20 or so years ago that you could use to develop your own city, your own economy, your own society. That's sort of like what the metaverse is. Or if you think about more recent video games like Fortnite or Minecraft, those are examples of video games that allow you to engage with and interact with this sort of alternate or augmented reality in the digital space. However, the metaverse is starting to move beyond just video games and starting to allow people to buy and invest in digital real estate, to build stuff, to sell stuff, to interact with others in a sort of social media kind of a way. So it's really allowing organizations and people to interact with this whole digital universe that's created outside of the physical world, but allows you to interact or commingle the physical world with this metaverse. Now there's a number of companies that are investing in the metaverse right now. So I already mentioned Facebook is one company that's investing very heavily in the metaverse right now. Microsoft is another example of a big tech company that's investing in the metaverse. And then you have metaverse startups like Sandbox that are creating their own metaverses. So one of the things to recognize is even though the title of this video is what is the metaverse, there is no one single the metaverse. There's multiple metaverses being created by different technology providers in the marketplace. And then finally, one thing that makes the metaverse unique in addition to some of the other things I've already mentioned is the fact that it depends on cryptocurrency as sort of the standard for buying and selling and engaging in commerce in the metaverse. So cryptocurrency is something that's becoming more widespread in mainstream society, but it's especially common in the metaverse in terms of e-commerce and economic transactions. Now we've talked a little bit about an overview of what the metaverse is, but how do we use it? What do we do with the metaverse? Well, I've talked about one example or one use case that's probably the most common use case right now, which is video games. The gaming world of Fortnite and Minecraft and even Second Life from a decade or so ago are examples of video games that are sort of like the metaverse. Those are examples of how the metaverse could be used to allow people to engage in video gaming. But where the real appeal comes and the real potential comes is moving beyond video games and creating a full society or universe that people can engage with. So if you go to, for example, Sandbox, the metaverse provider that I mentioned earlier, you can actually buy digital real estate in the Sandbox metaverse. People are paying a lot of money using cryptocurrency to buy actual real estate in the metaverse with the idea that they might be able to lease that land in the metaverse to others who might develop it, who might host events, who might do other stuff with that real estate. Which leads me to another use case, which is you can build stores, you can build storefronts, you can engage with people, you can interact with people, make friends and that sort of thing. So it's really like social media and the internet on steroids in this whole augmented virtual reality sort of world. 
Now, from an industrial perspective, if you're a business trying to figure out what is the metaverse and how does it fit with our long-term digital strategy, there's a lot of things you can be doing in the future to expand your business in the metaverse. For example, I mentioned before how you can buy and sell products in the metaverse. These could be digital products, or if you're, for example, an apparel retail shop, you might allow a mechanism or a way to interact with and engage with people in the metaverse to, for example, allow them to try on clothing, buy the clothing in the metaverse, and then maybe you ship the product to them in the physical world. That's just one example of how an apparel retailer might conduct commerce in the metaverse. Another industrial example of how businesses might use the metaverse is to be able to design and test products in the metaverse. For example, if you're an auto manufacturer, you might be able to design a car, go drive it in adverse weather conditions in the metaverse without the risk of your actual life being at stake. But you might be able to use that as a way to identify defects or to test performance that you could then use to roll out to the real world. And speaking of auto manufacturers, BMW actually recently partnered with Siemens to create an industrial metaverse for that exact purpose, a way to create a alternate reality where BMW and other industrial providers could design and test products in the metaverse. So this is something that's still emerging. It's still a young, immature space, but it is a potential use case for businesses that are trying to conduct economic transactions and grow their businesses in the metaverse. Despite all of the excitement and potential appeal of the metaverse, there's still a lot more questions than answers as it relates to this concept. The first question is which of these metaverse platforms will last? We know from experience that technological innovators don't always last. In fact, a small subset of technological innovators ultimately end up lasting. The metaverse that becomes the industry standard may be a company we've never even heard of. It may be some sort of upstart that hasn't really come into fruition yet. Or it could be Facebook, it could be Microsoft. We don't know. We don't know who the providers that are going to lead the charge with the metaverse are going to be in terms of mainstream adoption and more importantly, profitable business models, which is what this all comes down to. All I know is there's a lot of money being invested in the metaverse right now. Some people are going to win, some are going to lose. But until that happens, that creates a lot of uncertainty as to where we invest our time, which metaverse do we commit to. Those are all unknowns at this point. The other question is, what are the industry standards for the metaverse? So in other words, how do we create these open platforms where third party providers can create technologies and create additions to the metaverse? Those industry standards have not been defined. Each company that's investing in the metaverse is creating their own standards and their own way of building the metaverse. So we don't have any universal common standards yet. Another question is, when will the metaverse reach critical mass? In other words, when will it be big enough that we as businesses find that it makes sense to invest the time and money in the metaverse, knowing that we're going to get a return on the investment? We just don't know when that's going to happen. It will probably happen sometime in the near future, but whether that's a year from now or 10 years from now, that's still to be determined. Next question we have is how does the metaverse align with the physical world or does it align with the physical world? So I mentioned before that industrial metaverse that BMW and Siemens are working together to create. They're doing that to create sort of an alternate augmented reality that they can use to design and test products. So the question then has become how accurate is that alternate universe compared to the physical world if our goal is to emulate the physical world in the metaverse? That's something that's still to be determined. And then finally, the last question that I have about the metaverse is ethics and regulations the ethics of behavior that might be illegal in the physical world. How do we monitor that and account for that in the metaverse? And also what sort of rules and regulations might government entities put in place? So for example, we know that cryptocurrency is commonly used in the metaverse and some governments are trying to figure out how or if they crack down or more tightly manage cryptocurrency. And the same is probably true for the metaverse. There's a risk or a potential opportunity, I suppose, depending on how you look at it, that the government might step in and create standards or create rules that might either enable further adoption of the metaverse or it might stifle the development of the metaverse. So these are all just examples of questions you might want to consider as you think about whether or not the metaverse is something that's worth investing in at this moment in time. So I hope you found this information useful. And for more information on digital strategies and digital transformation best practices, 
I encourage you to download our annual digital transformation report, which also covers technological trends and things to be aware of as you navigate digital transformation in the 2020s and beyond. So I encourage you to download that with the link I've included below. I've also included links to other resources that I think will help you as you define your digital strategy and your digital transformation plans for the 2020s and beyond. So be sure to check out those links below. I hope you found this information useful and hope you have a great day. Now, despite all this potential upside and this really exciting, damn it, cut. I, know, right? <laughs> I was holding it in.